Hey guys, it's me again, Fred Kynes with All Kinds of Classics. We are back on the scene with Episode 9. Episode 9 involves jamming. We be jamming. So in this episode, we're, we're um, covering up the frame. You saw a little bit of that on the rear doors. We're capping it off all the doors, finishing up the door jams, t- tying that roof in where that drip edge goes the rain gutter um and just basically finishing up all of the uh, the um, door jams the <clears throat> latching mechanisms and just getting everything it's more the rest of the sheet metal basically going together i give quite a quite a bit of future perspectives on this and um You'll you'll uh, probably enjoy that as well. So please keep, keep keep it up. Take a look. Subscribe. It 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 keeps you alert for the next ones coming out. I'm in that three to five day cycle of pounding these out, and um, um, I hope I hope you're enjoying them. If you're not, send me comments. Let me see what I can do to adjust the future. Um, Let me see what I can do to help. Let me see what I can do to learn. There's things that I want to learn here, and I contribute for the sole purpose of that. Watch the video. Enjoy it. Uh, We'll we'll keep them coming. Thanks. Okay, I'm working on the latches today, and I got the Speedway latch set up. It comes with these plates, and I wanted to get these plates. You can get them with or without, but they could become a good reference point. Plus, they're laser cut, and they save a bunch of work. I made some brackets, pieces, those, those, and there's these, these little guys. Two, two and two left because I've welded a couple of them up. And these are the ones that I welded up. So, in comparison, these are for um, one side. I don't know which, and this is for another side. So you see they're they're going to be mirror images, of course. So, take the stock latch. I cut this notch out, which is on this side for here. It's a relief for the hitch. At the hitch, it's a re- leech for the latch. Okay, the latch assembly will go in like this. And get it lined up. We'll go in like that. And then, when it's mounted to the door, you can see that relief will then allow me. To uh, connect the pin for the door or the rod for the door or cable and the rod or cable down to the either the exterior door handle or to a popper Um, because of the thickness of the door let's get up here this is was my test pocket my profile for prototyping but this will sit in like this. But you can see this is the window channel. And it continues down. But if I stick it in fully into the door, I will be about halfway into the window channel. So I have to come forward with it, moving the rods. In my in my design, moving the rods to the outside of the door. Now I still have some cutting to do. You see I've got magic marker lines and everything on here for profiles. But I want to get this into here. See? Make my make my paper cut out. Paper pattern, cut every door, and then mount these in. Now this this distance is five eighths of an inch. The stick out to the this surface will be five eighths of an inch. So that'll allow me to, I need enough distance for a rod to go in if I need to bend it to go into the interior side. Or I can even follow it on the exterior side, but more than likely on the interior side because the mechanism will be on the interior side. Um, It's not there, it's right there is the door latch. Window, door, and God only knows 
<laughs> um, unused in this in this car. So anyway, this will go in. I have my relief for my pin attachments. I have a channel so that I can make sure that I have swing for the cable or the rod going down. It's simple. A simple uh, design. You can see it's all welded. You get started on these things and there's one's a different one than the other and then you start to do your, whoops, your compar oops, comparison. Boom. And okay, these are the same. These are the same. Okay. And you can see that those are welded different than this. I clamped it wrong and welded it up. So that's rework. Not not a you know horrible amount of rework, but you start to work on mirror images and stuff and you get excited about what you're doing and pretty soon you got an error. But it's not a big deal. I'll get it fixed, but it's rework. And I hate rework. But anyway, there's two uh, of the sides. Project today is to try to get the latches in. Again, fab. Dimensionally, get as dimensionally accurate as you can get. So that that, so that each of these two hinges, this one and this one, are identical, and those two are identical. Then I make a paper pattern for the cutout. I've got the rough line for the mock-up. The rough line for the mock-up. I've obviously got the angle that was supplied cut out, so I got that dimension to, for a baseline. And now I'm going to come in and slowly creep up on this until it fits just so I have enough for a weld joint. Then I'm, but before I weld it, of course, once the fitment works, then I'll come in and build a paper pattern so I can use that same pattern, lay it over the top of this would be that rear door then, the same hinge profile right swing, right swing, lay the paper pattern over this door by flipping it over and get the, the same profile. All latches in the same spot, all look identical, all operate identical, all adjust identical. Well, good morning, good evening, good afternoon. Um, spent the day yesterday Finishing up, uh, welding on the door posts, finishing up the rolled edge on the floor to tie it in, rather than a sharp edge, that's where the carpet will come down and it's consistent with the, consistent with the running straight across for the, for the door sill plates that will go in, um, again all welded on here. Tie-in plates for the post. Right there. Right there. Um, and then I started rolling this. Rolled this and then put her through the shrinker to get the radius in it. This is that piece. Oops. And this is the piece that goes on the jam there. I got the other side on uh halfway on so he's on he's rolled into the into the edge or uh welded into the seamed into the doorway opening i just got to finish the interior side then we'll go vertical then we do above the doors so and that'll fill out to finish out the jams i'd like to get the jams done today um, if at all possible, I think that's possible. There's some complexity to the upper gems. Complexity is probably a little bit of an overstatement, but they have, so it's hard to, well, you can see that they've got curvature to them curvature to them and a step so we'll have to figure that out 
been a couple of days, I think, since the last uh, video, and it's just been tough keeping up. I, I wound up taking employment, and I start uh, in two days, which is, it's, some people that might sound strange, why is it, you know, what's, what does that mean, taking employment? Well, just got to get out of the house for a while. Anyway, <clears throat> I fabbed up the the rear jams. Those turned out really nice. Really nice. We got the door edge in them. And I actually, um, this side, I actually closed this gap. It's actually only, you can see the weld bead, but it's an eighth of an inch thicker here. Because the, the bend in the body, this whole side was this way causing the window to tilt down, the back window to tilt down. I got that all stretched out when I cleaned all this up and uh, it was a that was a mess and that might be in a prior video. It wasn't a mess, it was just a lot of work to get three eighths of an inch. <laughs> anyway, so um, I got those in, both sides made it out of two pieces the bottom piece is there and you can see the hint of the weld right there and then I made the top piece I cut them open for the hinges and then the boys at at uh, my prior employer gave me a hand and I gave them a call shot them in and said can you spray these texture black and that they did so when you open the door, of course, the jam will be body color, and then this black hole, you know, once it's all covered up, will be met with a black hinge, and you'll see this area right here as you open the door. So I think it should dress out pretty good. Um, I also uh, fully welded the tubes, done with spot welding took all the bracing out uh, fully welded uh, the uh, let me get around there hinge holes all the hinge holes are are welded up the, of course that one was replaced with that or closed out with that um, had to raise this top bar just a little bit to match the other side it is higher uh, there was uh, will be some clearance to the trim plate, but that's I want that because I may ch might be chasing wiring through this. Anyway, all that's done. I didn't put mount the front hinges back on. I just put those guys on ten minutes ago uh, so that I can start working on the door gaps. Um, but to work on the door gaps is the next uh, small project is to get in here. What's that? Oh, is to get in here and close out these hinge holes, dress out the jam so it looks factory without, and see where the hinges were. There's going to be a little bit of straightening, you know, basic, you know, couple moments to do that. But close that out so it never has had a picture of the hinges in it. Finish welding up the latches, latch, uh, um, close out plates, and... Um, Generally, oh, there was something mounted on there. That was the the guide for the door. Of course, now with this type of a latch, that is the guide and the latch. So it calls those out. And basically get the la <coughs> jams addressed. <coughs> Excuse me. The concept is to try to come in to this slope. <coughs> since I found this laying in this door. You know, with the molding with the foam molding. I don't know yet whether I'm going to do that. There's a quarter inch step all the way around the door. 100% around the perimeter. I mean, I, I, I can incorporate it into the sill plate. But I could do the foam thing around here too. I don't know. More on that later, but for sure it's going to have, I want it super weather sealed. There's 
there's all kinds of concepts for foam, but I don't like that look. You know, of course, this could be covered too. But um, that's the status as of the day. Um, looking at the top, this is one of the original top plates. Swiss cheese. This guy. And on complete, oh, there's one in there, and the back one's sitting in there. Completely unmolested. Completely unmolested. So then he goes in. This is where the wood was and the nails were. But then I, oh, let's look at this one. Then I pinch them together. Pull the roof in. We got some damage here, so this is out, but I have to pull the roof in and tie it all together. So I'll give a better visual. There is Okay, so that meets with the roof. Get it up. Tie it in so it meets with the roof. This is a copy of the they had two inches wood up there and I can rely on the back side of this see that's curved to follow the roof I can rely on the back side of that once I make one of these and copy it exactly to guide where this is like that see to guide the shape of the roof all the way back so there you have it for today we got to get those made I don't know where I can find a break with a quarter by 3 8 by half or it's closer to 7 16 but in that neighborhood bend they need die small enough to go over a in this case 30 not not 30 inches but a 30 inch die be able to do that. I tried to concoct one out of a couple of pieces of angle iron and I can't get that type of a radius. You need a, a decent break to, to get that type of a radius on it. So there will be there will be more later but that's it for the day. Hello again. January or July uh, 23rd to 2022 I am building the headers the uh, top trim pieces and the roof connecting pieces I've got them laid out this is for that side this is the front door that's the rear door it turns out that that is identical to this or pardon me that is identical to this that's the front door over there it's also the rear passenger door. They're identical pieces, and I learned that because I had three pieces. One was gone, but I had three damaged pieces and matching two of them together. Then I learned that they are mere images of each other also. So I got them all bead rolled, and that's the center post. And that, I mean, I got them all broke. I broke them straight, and then I shrunk them to the radius. And then that one winds up being the curvature of the roof. There's a continuous shrink on this that gets a little tighter to follow that roof line. I experimented with TIG. Uh, I have TIG before. I've TIG eighth inch uh, stainless and and uh, made a tank, and it worked out well. Uh, it was leak proof, but. I was taking this and I've got a sample over there and uh, I didn't have fun with it. So I make these together and um, ground them just as I've done the rest of the body. So just use the O23. Um, in this case, it, over a, a lot of this, I used O30 with low current and um, cut and butt. So I had a 40,000 gap typically. Here I pulled these completely together. Uh, as I welded them. The assembly is on a it's a two foot spread on either end of course they widen out in the middle because they, they're curved. This is the straight piece bet 90 three quarter inch that I'll drill and those will weld to the inside of the frames 
on either side and then the other piece right here put on the brake bent the shape and do it and then came and trunk it you can see the shrink marks in it to get to the curve and copied the two best pieces then I took the assembly marked here and there straight edge um, across it followed a piece of stainless steel for a straight cut all the way down so the gap you know, pardon me pardon me the gap on this end is narrower and you can see it gets the material thickness here gets wider as you go across the curve and now I will hold these two up put them on the on the square tube like this I think you get the picture and where there was there is there any material memory I'll close the gap I'm gonna clamp it down with six clamps use this little guy and I've had a little bit of a gap about 60 thou but I'll close him tack 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 all the way across and then and then uh, weld it up um, continuous uh, a lot of that is stitch you know poke 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 until you could all that is this with 023 on top of a great big heat sink I do one inch uh, one inch stitches I guess in this instead of individual tacks and and bring this guy together clean my surface if I got had anything that bonded to it and start on the next one this is the fourth one uh, and I'm finishing the headers then I will weld them in they will be backed on the inside of this with a 3 8 inch piece so it overlaps and will tie in to this bead right here so they'll be right behind here pushing those two materials together I can get in, see there's my hand, I can get in behind and I'll pull that roof line to that form and finish with the final shape. That'll be everything. That jam's done, that jam's both sides is done, these jams are done. They just need to be uh, sandblast everything, do any uh, uh, appropriate filler or seam sealer. I will be using seam sealer. Uh, like this will all be seam sealed. Close out that radius, give it a factory look. Uh, modern factory look it was nailed to a piece of wood and originally I'll have a quarter uh, half inch reveal then all the way around the car and uh, right here all the way around the car picture framed for a potential ceiling surface but uh, at this point I don't know what that is I don't know what that is yet I've got ideas okay well, it's uh, Thursday, the 27th, 28th, something like that of July. Should have looked before I, I uh, started the video. But at this point, now I've got the, put the new jams in, okay? The upper door jams are, are formed. And all are in. Tack welded on the inside, tack welded on the outside. Now I'm going to deal with the, the corners. <clears throat> These are at right angles to the door, to the exterior side of the door. Right angles at, to the interior side of the post. Oh, sorry. To the interior side of the post and to the interior side of the rear door. I suppose I could have gone, I think this is, yeah, exterior. The reason why I couldn't do interior is because it rolls there. But anyway, they're, so they're all square, um, uh, straight across, everything's straight across, square with the opening. Uh, and now I just have to uh, deal with the inside corners, fill those in, and then I'll, I don't think I'm going to weld and, and take that to a sharp edge. I'm going to use seam sealer in here. But I do want to dress uh, these out 
so they so they uh, wrap in really 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 nice in the end and that's it for them then um, then I uh, built a punch list uh, this day or a couple of days ago and I'm kind of peeling off of it um, and that is to finish welding the roof which I finished the exterior side the interior side and I have the corners to then go and start welding up the doors the hinge pockets for the doors and basically just dress up the jam so they look pretty and don't don't have the appearance of the old latch mechanism and the uh, uh, of course the hinge in the hinge pocket so that'll take a little bit of time it's not complicated work it's just meticulous because there were 10 hinges and all that kind of stuff then I'm gonna hang and gap the doors I did as you know from an earlier video I started on the rear door because that gap was extreme it was nearing 3 8 and you can see at the top I want it between 3 16 and a quarter um, but um, uh, so I, when I built the door, the uh, panel for uh, this door, I needed three eighths is, is a little strong, isn't it? An eighth of an inch from three eighths is five, is uh, a quarter. Yeah, no, that, that. So I had about an eighth of an inch gap that I filled, and I'm following that down, and I've got a little hee hee right here. So I'm going to try to address all of that and get that straightened out. If I put a if I put a straight edge on here, and I don't have one, I have a level, which isn't going to work with this shit. Um, but I don't have a straight edge immediately available. And I think you can kind of see it right here. i got to get that out, that woohoo out of there. Um, this door gap, and it's all part of that whole shit and mess of um, pulling this side in. But this winds up being the end result of the whole thing, and which is you know, in theory, about three sixteenths surface to surface. That's the difference um, that I'm, you know, taking up on the stack here. So, so, because these were, these were all cut, you know, th this one would fit in over there and all that kind of a thing. Should have, should have uh, considered that in, in placement and stretch that, but I'm going to have to, it's just more work. That's all it is, just more work. So that's where I'm at, and now that I'm gainfully employed, working 10 hours a day, <clears throat> five, six, seven days a week, um, it's it's going to be a little bit more difficult. But uh, this at this uh, juncture, today's Thursday, tomorrow's Friday, I will have the weekend. My intentions are to finish the punch list uh, by the weekend, if if at all possible. And obviously, I'm going to have some play time. Uh, uh, after I gap the doors, it should be in theory ready for sandblast, but I do want to go around all of the framing and make sure that I've addressed any any tack ups that are have been continuously welded, make sure all the connections are done, and then sandblast and uh, and fill the cowl. Um, I, I, I believe in, in after I sandblast, there are several small areas that I can before I put the epoxy paint on that I can address really quickly uh, with any filling that I need to do any fiberglass filling that I need to do um, that isn't no longer requires any any hammer and doll uh, dolly type work uh, so I just want to get it straight perfectly straight right now and uh, and work from from the front to the back in this case with any appropriate fill so so that's a that's a subcategory of sandblasting so I'm gonna I'm gonna scope out the car uh, after I sandblast um, I believe I'll do uh, so, the seam seal on all of the welds uh, I'm seam seal yes on all of the welds seam seal the corners of the doors um, I'm possibly even just go ahead and hang the rain gutter. I ordered that. That should be here. Uh, if it's not, that's not a big deal. I don't really care. But it'll be blasted. So whatever I can do uh, at the at the early stages right now, 
that isn't any major uh, shaping, forming, anything of that nature, uh, either through hammer and dolly or, uh, well, there isn't going to be much of that for, for uh, filler. I don't intend on doing any shaping with the filler. I intend on just simply taking out any small, small um, imperfections. So, uh, and then after that, uh, I immediately want to go to uh, uh, box liner. More than likely will be a product from Menards called, uh, I believe it's a Rust-Oleum product. Um, I've used it with extreme success on many trucks, probably six, seven trucks now, um, including my current truck uh, pickup. And uh, I have just had uh, nothing but uh, excellent results with it. And I've used another product called Duraback. And I put that into my 37, which is sitting right here. And um, I can quick show that. And I used the tan, you know, trying to kind of color match the fender and all that kind of crap. But uh, I put that in here and I don't know what the results are because I don't really use that box for that. But I, I liked the look. I wanted to get rid of the wood. But um, that was a Durback product. And I'm just trying to think of the name. <laughs> Rhino, no, no, no. It's not Rhino Liner, but um, it'll come to me in, in a future video. But anyway, all of the interior, everything, everything, sides, this, all the welds back here will have urethane on them, uh, pushed in with, uh, with a, um, applied with a mud squeegee uh, or a mud application tool. So that I get them all the way and I don't have any exposed metal uh, on any of the welds. Okay? Um, any pinholes, nothing. There's nothing, there's no room for error. Not error, there's no room for error. There's no room for humidity. So I'll push that through uh, in all of those areas um, and then I will line this entire interior with box liner, everything, floor, you know, everything. Now, uh, earlier, uh, many, many videos earlier, there are intentions on slitting this thing right down the middle and widening it out. That will occur after I purchase the chassis, and then we will go from there. Thank you. Mm -hmm.